Welcome to the Life is an Escape Room podcast, where learning about yourself is an adventure. Here's your hosts, the Eans Escape Leads, Chris and Jeff. Hello, fellow Escape Leads. I'm Chris. And I'm Jeff. And today we'd like to welcome Jason Dion. Hello, Jason. Hey, Jeff. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Uh, before we get started, can you tell us something about yourself? Give us a little background. Yeah. So uh, thanks for having me here today. Uh, my name is Jason Dion. I am the founder of Dion Training, and I've been in the IT and cybersecurity realm for about 25 years. Um, so I have a whole bunch of certifications behind my name, as well as having a lot of experience as a SOC director, IT director, CIO, and other things uh, throughout the industry. Um, and I think today we're going to be talking a little bit about you know finding your, your passion in your career, uh, based on the skill sets you have and, and how that may even tie into things like escape rooms. Yes, because we love our escape rooms. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, which is fascinating. It'll be interesting to see where our conversation goes, because I know uh, even though Jeff and I are in completely different career fields, we use our skill sets uh, that we use in escape rooms all the time. So where where do you want to start with this topic? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think probably one of the best places to start is, you know, what kind of careers really line up with the skills you learn in an escape room? Um, and, you know, when I think about that, I think a lot about either cybersecurity analysts or penetration testers. And both of these are awesome career fields that are really not going away anytime soon. Uh, as we've moved more and more to the internet and more and more online, our companies have needed this skill set. And when we talk about cybersecurity analysts, these are people who do defense of the network. And we talk about penetration testers. These are people who attack a network, but mm. legally and with permission. Right. So for yes. instance, <laughs> I might hire a penetration tester to come after my company to find out all the vulnerabilities we have so we can then make ourselves better and, and patch it up and make sure it's, it's good and secure. Um, and, and the reason I think that both of these really tie in well with escape rooms is the things that you learn in escape room, especially with in terms of creative or nonlinear thinking, are things that are just completely needed in these type of environments. Because very rarely are you going to conduct a penetration test where you're doing everything from step one to step 10 in a linear order every single time. Instead, yeah. you have to take these things out of order. You've got to get a, a, a small clue and then use that clue to make a, a hypothesis of what you need to do next. And then based on that, you're going to find the next thing. And it's these little clues that happen that allow us to look at the whole picture and go, oh, this is how the bad guys got into this network and stole everybody's credit cards. It wasn't just one door that was open. It was a series of 10 or 15 or 20 doors, but they had to weave their way through each of those different openings to be able to get to the ultimate thing, which was the thing they're trying to win. And I see escape rooms being the same way. I've done a lot of these over the years. In fact, I'm going again tonight to another escape room uh, <laughs> with, with my team. And we find that a lot of these things that, you know, the ones that are not as much fun are the ones that are very linear and they're very, you know, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, whereas the ones that are more nonlinear and you're piecing together things to get the bigger picture, it, it tends to be a lot more fun and it's a lot more realistic to what we find in the real world. Yeah. Is there like, because you know, we love stories. <laughs> <laughs> so could you share maybe an escape room story that helped you identify different skill sets in relation to your career? Yeah. Um, you know, one that I did recently, we had a bunch of people from my team there as well as a bunch of our friends, because uh, at my company, we are mostly a hybrid or remote company. And so we only have about mm -hmm. three or four of us locally, and then everybody else is spread out across the world. So those mm -hmm. three or four people were all together, and we were doing an escape room, as well as some of my other friends to fill out the room, because we need at least eight people. And uh, we had gotten to one clue that wasn't working uh, properly. And, you know, mm -hmm. you had to get four different pieces to get the four letters of the combination lock to, be able to open it up and get the key and then escape. Well, we were able to get three of the four based on the different clues, but for some reason we could not figure out that fourth one. And it's because the actual clue itself was broken and they told us that after. Mm -hmm. But um, so, you know, instead of just sitting there trying over and over again to get that clue, we just looked at the lock and said, well, there's only, you know, 10 combinations. And if you already have, <laughs> you know, three of the four, then you know it's only one of those 10. So instead of having 9,999 9, combinations, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, <laughs> we instead now only have 10 because we already figured out three of the four pieces. So we sat there and we actually brute forced the lock by going one, try it, nope, two, mm. try it. And you guys have probably done that before too. Uh -huh. uh, but that's really applicable <laughs> to the way that we do things in the pen testing world as well, because sometimes you won't have perfect information. You won't have all the pieces you need. Right. But if I can get three of the four pieces or 75%, I can probably guess the other 25%. And when we do things like password cracking, uh, one way is to do brute force where you're just trying every single possible combination. But again, with four digits and, you know, if you have four digits and each one's 10 digits, that's 1,000 possible combinations. It takes a while to go through those, right? Um, 
then that would just be a, a pure brute force. But if you have some information, like we know that your dog's name is Fluffy and we know that you went to high school mm -hmm. at, you know, Banyan High School, we can then take those keywords and combine those with some brute force to be able to do what we call a hybrid attack and wait, work our way through, which is essentially what we're doing with this lock because we had three quarters of the information yeah. and we just brute force the rest of it because we had this hybrid attack and it makes it go through so much quicker and so much easier. Um, it's just one of those things that I saw that was just very relatable to the work that we do. Yeah. Now, when you're uh, talking about your team, uh, how do you recruit for your team and how do you find these skills? I, so like if a person was interested in doing cybersecurity, yep. how do you get them? Yeah, so that is also one of the big challenges out there right now is that there are a lot of cybersecurity jobs in the market, but a lot of companies don't want to take a chance on somebody who hasn't had a cybersecurity job before. And mm -hmm. so everyone is fighting for the same small pool of candidates and then complaining that we don't have enough people and the costs are too high and we can't find enough people. And um, I think one of the big issues there is that most companies these days aren't willing to take a chance on somebody that isn't proven. And what I mean by that is if you haven't had a job in this field before, they're very unlikely to hire you into that job. Uh, and that's because they're just afraid of investing a lot of time and money into somebody that won't work out. And there's a lot of people that this career field just doesn't work out for. Um, I've seen some people who are really, really logical people and they like to do everything in a very checklist oriented linear mm. order. That doesn't work so well as a pen tester. Yes, there are yeah. checklists we follow. Yes, there are procedures we follow. But you still need to be able to go with the flow based on the clues that you're getting as you're going through the events. So, you know, for me, in in my experience, I've always tried to hire more for aptitude than what they know mm -hmm. because I can yeah. teach you the skills. I can't necessarily teach you how to think nonlinearly, how to find those clues, how to be a detective, because essentially you're trying to be a digital detective, especially on the analyst side. We're trying to figure out what happened and how did they break in. Um, you know, so the big challenge there is just, you know, if you're looking at a big company, they don't want to take a chance on somebody without experience. And so the three things that people always look for in this world is experience, which is number one, uh, certifications and degrees. Those are kind of the three big ones in our area. Um, experience, there's not much you can do for experience except for get experience. And it's one of those catch 22s. Yeah. Uh, you know, nobody wants to hire you without two years of experience. Well, no one will give you two years of experience because they won't hire you. And then what do you do? Um, and there's some things you can do around that. Like you could work for yourself. You could take on contract work. You could work as a volunteer because there's a lot of nonprofits that need that skill set that can't afford a full time cybersecurity person. Uh, I know people who have worked with the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and their church groups mm. and things like that as a way to get that experience. And again, it's this non-linear creative way of trying to get experience without getting a job job that everybody <laughs> thinks is the only way to get experience and so you can do some of these things the second thing is certifications for almost everything we teach there's certifications out there uh for instance if you want to be a penetration tester there's a certification called pen test plus uh, that teaches you how to be a penetration tester if you want to be an analyst there's one called cybersecurity analyst plus and that one will also allow you to get the skills needed to be in that position now, just getting that certification isn't going to get you a job, but it's going to get you an interview. And now it's yours to be able to prove to them that you can do the job and, and be able to get there. So that's one of the other uh, things. And then the third thing is degrees. And everyone, uh, you know, I'm looking at both of you on camera right now, and you guys probably are around my age, 40, 50. Um, and if you grew up, you know, you're 40 or 50 now, you probably were told your whole life, you got to go to college if you want a real job. You got to <laughs> you got to go to college. It's, it's the only way to get a good job. And honestly, yep. these days, that's not true. Um, but it, when we grew up, that was what everybody was told. And so mm -hmm. I see a lot of people who always think, oh, college is the answer. Uh, in our world, in the world of cybersecurity, uh, college is a piece, but it is not the only answer. I know a lot of people who went to a, get a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. They're now 24 coming out of school. They're overly, overly qualified, and yet nobody mm -hmm. will hire them because, again, no experience, right? No experience, um, and so yeah. these are the challenges that we have to figure our way through in our career field. Um, but for us in, in the cybersecurity world, what I find is that the degree is the least important of those three things. And yeah. usually that's just more used to establish pay bands than it is to establish whether or not you'll get the job. For them, certifications are more important and experiences is by far the number one important thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's fascinating too. Um, when we had your sister Allison on, she looked at her job in law and saw escape rooms all over the place. I use it constantly as a speaker, as an instructor. Jeff uses the same skills uh, in his job. So Overseeing it's funny. people, you interact. Yeah, with that. Yep. yeah. So I, I think it's fascinating how the skills translate into just well anything, right? Life, work. Are there some maybe? some ways that you can suggest people can, so they love escape rooms. Maybe they're already in a career path. What are some ways that they can look around and maybe make work a little more exciting 
Yeah, I think uh, one of the things is figure out what it is you like about escape rooms, right? Um, mm. Is it that you like performing them? Is it that you like trying to find the mystery behind something or the hidden, uh, mm. you know, the hidden context? Because a lot of times you're seeing something in a room that's it just looks like a picture, but then you know you shine a UV light on it and there's you know hidden stuff. Or mm. you're looking at a picture and you see that there's some Roman numerals like on the backgrounds and those happen to be the number for a key. And it's those little subtle things that are kind of out there that you're noticing that you put together to get the answer. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, for folks, when you're doing these escape rooms, you'll find there's things you really like and things you really hate. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, I know I hate when there is a room where I have to do the same thing over and over 15 times mm -hmm. just to get it through. Yeah. Uh, I was in one about a month ago where it was like an hour and a half long room. And for the most part, it was, it was a good room and, and well laid out. But there was like one thing that we had to do and we literally had to go back and do it like five different times like mm. you had to open a chest and get some things then you put them in a certain order and you do that five different times so like okay at this point we're just <laughs> wasting time right <laughs> yeah. um but if you like those kind of puzzles like oh now i know exactly what to do look i win mm -hmm. right um <laughs> then you know being a penetration tester is probably not for you right because that's yeah. one of those things where you you are going to experience something different all the time because there's always new things that are happening new attacks that are happening and, and they're looking for people to figure out how these things happen and how we can stop them in the future. Um, so that's one thing I think. Uh, the other thing I think is you'll figure out pretty quickly in an escape room if you like communicating with others and working as a team. There are mm -hmm. some rooms where you have to work as a team and you literally cannot finish it unless you have three or four people standing in the right place doing the right thing at the same time. Um, and if you are not somebody who likes to work in groups and you're more of a, I want to be in the dark basement by myself, hands on keyboard, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to figure out which career field inside of cybersecurity or inside of whatever field you're doing is going to work best to your skill set, uh, whether that's being communicative, working as a team player, finding these nonlinear creative solutions. Um, all of these are things that you can find in a job or not find them in a job, but knowing yourself and knowing what you enjoy, I think it's helpful to be able to figure out and be in a job that you do enjoy because we spend so much of our time at work that if we're yeah. doing something we don't enjoy, um, I, I get it. We have to pay the bills. We got to make sure our family eats. We got to make sure the mortgage is paid. But there's a lot of ways to make a living. Find one that you enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, now, what are the things about yourself that you've learned the most of in an escape room? Uh, I find that I tend to be an overbearing leader. <laughs> I'm the guy who wants to have his hands on everything and take over. Um, so I have to like pull myself back and not do that. Um, so yeah, that, that, that tends to be my, my biggest weakness. And I find myself doing that at work as well, right? If people are struggling mm -hmm. behind, uh, it's not just that I want to help them up and overcome their thing. I just want to get the thing done. And so sometimes yeah. I'll be like, okay, move over. Let me just take over and I'll, I'll, I'll fix this for you. Um, so that's, that's probably definitely a, a negative one that has come out that I, I see because I am a very competitive person and I want to get things done and I want to get it done right away. Um, <laughs> so that's probably my, my, my biggest weakness I've noticed through escape rooms. Um, yeah. And then I get bored easily, right? So if mm, there's not a lot yep. going on or if I can get frustrated, like I'll just check out. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. you guys have fun. I'll just stand in the corner now. Um, yeah. You know, again, kind of a weakness of mine. Uh, I have to keep myself engaged. Otherwise, I will just drift in and not be interested anymore. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, I love it with escape. I mean, escape rooms, right? Yep. So one, we can use learn about ourselves right through these experiences. We can use that to one, find the career of our choice. Or two, say we're already in the career, we can use that to help motivate us by seeing it from a different perspective and work on ourselves, like you said, with, so, I mean, why everyone should be doing escape rooms, right? Yeah. And, and, and I love what you just said there, you know, um, the different perspective, because I've seen that in, in many, many different escape rooms where if you are, you know, down on your hands and knees on the floor, you could see something that you wouldn't see otherwise. Or if you're standing yeah. on top of a table, you could see like the way that things are laid out makes a number or something. Yeah. And there's those things that like, it's been there the whole time. You just didn't see mm -hmm. it because you didn't have the right perspective. And I see this with a lot of students that I work with who are trying to break into cybersecurity where they just get frustrated because like, I've applied for a thousand jobs and nobody will take me. I'm like, I know it's really, really hard. But once you get that first job, I'm telling you, it's going to open up the whole world for you because yeah. once you have that one year of experience, next time you go to apply for a job, you'll apply for five positions and you'll get like three job offers because there's so much competition once you're in the industry. But getting that break in is just so hard. And people just think there's like this traditional path where, oh, well, I got to go to college. If I get the degree and the certifications, mm -hmm. they'll just hire me. And I'm like, it doesn't always work that way because they really are focused on experience. And so while you're in college, get a part-time job. While you're in college, do an internship. While you're in college, volunteer someplace. Anything you can do to get that experience clock running is going to help you because that's the one thing that takes the longest to get. And if mm -hmm. you wait until you graduate college, because that's the traditional thing is 
do my four years of college, get my degree, go get a job, making you know thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year as a, as a minimum qualified person to get enough experience to then make really good money later on. Um, there's a lot of ways you can circumvent that if you think creatively and if you think nonlinearly. And a lot of yeah. people just don't think about that. It's a lot of the shifting of perspective to make that happen. Yeah. Well, I'm also hearing uh, tenacity and perseverance. Right? Oh, heck yeah. And we learn <laughs> we learn that in escape rooms too. When you look up, there's 10 minutes left. There's like 20 puzzles and you're like, holy crap, how am I going to get this done? <laughs> Just buckle down and do it, right? Yep. That's right. Oh, there's so <laughs> many games that we've uh, finished in like the last five minutes, last mm-hmm. two minutes. It's amazing. Yeah. Seconds. <laughs> Seconds. And I think the other thing is, you know, a lot of people that I talk to about escape rooms are always like, oh, well, if you've done one, haven't you done them all? Because like, they, <laughs> think, they think they're all the same puzzles, right? It's like, well, no. th- there's, a lot of, there's a lot of repeat puzzles, but I would say that, you know, every room I go into, I usually find at least one thing that's different that I haven't seen before in a different room. And I've done probably 50, 60 rooms at this point. Um, and, and I find that the, everyone has just a little bit different way of doing it. And I find the same thing inside of cybersecurity, right? There's a lot mm-hmm. of things that we can give you. We can give you a checklist and a procedure, but you can't just follow it from one to a hundred because there's going to be things that are going to take you off yeah. the path. And we have to have a critical thinking human to go, you know what? Step three says to do this, but that doesn't apply in this case. So mm-hmm. let's skip that and do this thing instead. And I find the same thing with escape rooms. If you just attack the same escape room with all the experience from your previous rooms, you'll mm-hmm. usually actually throw yourself into a, the wrong direction. Cause you're like, Oh, well <laughs> in this other room I had to do this. And so you start going down that path and it's like yes. completely not the way that that, that challenge was. <laughs> So it teaches us critical thinking too. So I'm curious, before we get to um, services and stuff, what has been your, and you don't need to share the room or the location, but maybe the experience. What has been the best experience you've had so far in escape rooms? Like the theme and and the Um, the I would say the one that I did uh, recently with my sister, Allison, we actually drove out to Tampa, which is about an hour and a half from where we live in Mm -hmm. Orlando. And um, they have a really, really cool one out in Clearwater that was a tattoo shop um, uh-huh. and it had multiple different uh, things, including live actors. And it was just a really, really, really well done room and really uh, interactive. Uh, it's probably one of the more in-depth ones that I've been a part of uh, so far, because a lot of the ones I've done before are like one or two rooms, smaller, uh, lots of locks. And this one had other things you did besides just, you know, getting the four combinations on a lock. So uh-huh. I thought that one was really cool. So how did Allison react when the... Um... The lighter was the flipped lighter on. was flipped on. <laughs> yeah, she, she she jump scares a little pretty pretty easily. So <laughs> we, all, we all jumped a little on that one. <laughs> I started laughing. <laughs> we were able to travel down and do that room. We know exactly which one you're talking about. That was yeah, a, yeah that was a really good room. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that, yeah. that place had three really good rooms, and we went there for two or three days, and we ended up doing three rooms in, in the, the two days we were down there. Uh, went mm-hmm. to a little Airbnb and hung out for the weekend. <laughs> oh, an amazing weekend. Yeah. See, time with family, you're working on yeah, yourself, et cetera. Yep. Okay, so what um, could you share a little bit about your products and our services with our listeners and how to get a hold of you? Yeah, so uh, if anybody is interested in cybersecurity and really diving into a career in cybersecurity, I've got two great things that can help you with that. One is completely free. Uh, it's my podcast, yourcyberpath.com. Mm-hmm. That's Y O U R C Y B E R P A T H dot com. And uh, that podcast, we are on episode 100 as of the time of us wow. talking right now. Nice. Uh, it's been out for a couple of years. And we go through everything about hiring, firing, when to apply for a job, how to write your wow. resume, how to do your interviews, what are the different jobs in cybersecurity, because everyone always thinks of analyst and pen tester. And there's really 40 or 50 different roles that are part yeah. of cybersecurity that can help you get a different perspective of how you can break into this industry. Uh, because this is a great industry to be in. And there's, you know, most people are going to make six figures, you know, $100,000 plus per year in this career field. And it doesn't require college. Uh, there's a lot of things you can nice. do to get into this field. Uh, so it's really, really cool, especially if you like puzzles and games, uh, mm-hmm. you'll be right at home. Uh, and then the other thing I have is uh, on my other side, I work uh, for a company called Dion Training, which I was the founder of. Uh, and we do all the training and certifications to help people get those jobs. And so if you're looking to get your Pentest Plus or CYSA Plus, uh, we sell both of those as well as about 40 or 50 other courses. And that's just over at DionTraining.com. Uh, you can go there, check it out. And again, that's one of those things, like I said, experience is number one, certification is number two, degrees are number three, and degrees are really only there to establish your, your pay band. So if you get some experience, if you can get those certifications, you'll be able to get a job in this field uh, following the things we teach you at your cyber path. 
Oh, excellent. Well, and now to wrap up, what's your final piece of advice for everybody out there? I think it's to embrace your nonlinear and creative thinking. And it's a muscle. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Um, you know, depending on, you know, escape rooms may be your thing. And I'm assuming they are if you're listening to this podcast. But if they're not, <laughs> there's other ways of doing that, too. Uh, I used to play D&D a lot and RPGs. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're playing those role playing games, especially things like D&D or Warhammer or things like that. There's a lot of nonlinear creative thinking that goes on. And if you really want to challenge, try being the DM for a campaign because then you're basically <laughs> building escape rooms the entire time in this virtual <laughs> mind space uh, with all the different puzzles and challenges and things like that. And so um, I-, I think if you can embrace that nonlinear creative thinking, that is where you're going to have the most success in your career, not just in the world of cybersecurity, but in most careers. Because as we have done more and more automation, more and more AI, um, there's a lot of things AI can do really, really well. And there's some things that it doesn't do really well. Uh, the new ones are getting better at creative thinking, but still we need a human to go, that looks good. That doesn't look yeah. good. This is a good 80% solution, but I need to take it the other 20%. Um, whereas if it's something that I could put down and there's five steps to this process and it's the same five steps every time, I don't need a human. I can automate mm-hmm. that. I can have a computer do that and it will cost me nothing. So as a human in this changing world, we want to find the jobs that embrace this creative thinking, this nonlinear thinking, yeah. the things that only you as a human can do, because that's going to make sure you have a long and successful career moving forward. Mm. Great I advice. love it. Great advice. Oh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having Thanks. me, Chris and Jeff. Want to learn more about the Eans Escape Leads? Buy the book or read the blog? Visit lifeisanescaperoom.com 